feels good. Just like that prostitute with a nine iron and ice cubes during AFI time last week. Welcome, and although I have no idea why you're here, I deeply thank you for the view. Sorry it has taken me a bit to jump back on this horse. I was out of country for a short time, but I'm back and ready to prove just how dumb I am with more videos. Grab your favorite juice, spike the crap out of it with some vodka, add a couple of cubes, and then force me to call it a hamburger. Before getting into this, I want to make a special shout out to Eric Murphy, the, the person on the left in this video. I've been a fan of his for quite a while now. In my opinion, he is one of the very best modelers of open, honest, useful dialogue that is creating content these days. If you're unaware of him, please do check him out, and please do not take this video as a fair understanding of his talent in the areas of useful dialogue. All can fall victim to confirmation bias, misunderstandings, and failing to remember that we can all be wrong, myself certainly included. With that in mind, hold on tight, this will be a bit of a ride. At the end of it, if I have offended, hurt, or otherwise made anyone feel less important, well, it's only because you're not important. Neither am I, which is one reason I'm masked. I care as much about your wants, feelings, and desires as you care about mine, or as we care about one of the thousands that die daily due to starvation, pollution, religious wars, etc. This is not about you, nor is it about me. This is about all of us. If you can get off your high horse, rocking as it may be, we can begin to help everyone. Take it away, guys. Hey, V, Eric, how are you guys doing? Hey! We are doing okay. What can yeah. we help you with? Uh, first, let me just uh, congratulate you on your show. I think you guys are doing a great job. And congratulations to Eric on his debate with uh, Team. I'll, oh, uh, don't congratulate me. Down. Don't congratulate me yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That's very nice of you. Yeah. Joe seems like a nice guy, an honest interlocutor who genuinely wants to have a conversation about something. Look, I'm well aware of why YouTubers give their videos, let's go with enticing, titles. But as we shall see later, your title of Joe's Slippery Slope is inaccurate and may be better aimed inwards than outwards. I worry that you two may be creating a little bubble to stay safe in, which is your prerogative, I suppose. Then again, you are calling your channel Skeptic Generation. If you are skeptics, I would suggest focusing on those who disagree with you in order to test that you are indeed correct in your beliefs. Perhaps attributing fallacies to people falsely is not in your best interest, but as you like. Sorry for interrupting. Um, no, it's okay. Go ahead. The last, the last call that uh, Dean called with you about about the transracial movement. Uh, yes, <laughs> I don't know if I call it a movement so much as there have been people who have said that they are transracial. Uh, but yes, continue. Okay, I don't know. I just found like uh, I found your answer and how you responded to him to be a bit. You know, this is nothing personal, but I just found it kind of to be a little bit hypocritical. Interesting. Why? Um, it seems that, you know, I guess, you know, being trans is very important to you, right? And you think people should respect your right to identify yourself as how you please, right? I, yes. And I would think that somebody who's transracial would deserve the same respect and same, same, uh, just the same respect that you deserve, right? Uh, as a person, absolutely. <sighs> I certainly don't know Joe, and don't want to misrepresent what he is saying. So, knowing that I could be way off here, it seems as though Joe is saying that if V is able to ask people to use they and them as pronouns, and expects people to do this, then what is the difference between that and someone asking people to refer to them as another race? Before what ensues, let's take a look at how these conversations regularly go. Although people use fuzzy language to skip over some important parts of this conversation, as well as others, I will not fall into that trap. You may use whatever words you like. I'm not saying you must use mine. I'm simply rather trying to make things clear. 
For the purposes of this video, I will use the following words as I define them here. Biological sex. The sex of an individual, being male or female, being based on biological differences between those two sexes. The differences include reproductive organs, hormones, chromosome differences, and others. Not having all of these characteristics, much like missing fingers, malformed hands, or strange fingernails, neither means the definition of hand is wrong, nor that you can't be referred to as existing in one of these groups. Intersex. The 0.018% thereabouts of the population that does not fall into one of these two biological sex groups. Personality. The combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinctive character. Sexual personality. The combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinctive sexual character. Nature. The part of each of us which is different and comes strictly from our DNA. Nurture. The part of each of us which is different and comes strictly from our environment. Gender. A word that has been co-opted such that we can't have meaningful conversations on the topic. I do not use this word anymore. Race. Each of the major groupings into which humankind is considered to be divided on the basis of physical characteristics or shared ancestry. Culture. The customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. With that out of the way, let me be very clear. I care about personality. It allows me to like some people and dislike others, as my personality allows some to like me and most to not. Beyond my own social interactions, however, I care very little for personality. I care very much about the nature-nurture question. I think the spectrum is important, and we ought to learn as much as we can about this question in order to better understand the monkeys that we are. I don't give a damn about your biological sex. Hell, I don't even care about my biological sex. It is what it is. We can undergo operations to make changes, but getting a facelift, although may make grandma more beautiful and even feel better, doesn't make her younger. I care equally for those people who are intersex as I do for those who are born with misshapen hands, spinal problems, or any other such difference from that which is drastically more common. I think we should learn about their conditions and help them where we can and where they would like us to. I don't give a damn about your sexual personality. So long as you're doing whatever you want with a consenting adult, your bedroom is yours. I do care about my sexual personality, as there are things I like and things I do not like. It should probably come as no surprise that I would like more of the things I like and less of the things I don't like. If you feel differently, you should probably see a doctor. I don't care at all about your race. I'm not saying that I don't see color. I'm saying that your race is wholly unimportant. Nor do I care about my race. This, like biological sex, is not something I chose, nor something I can change. We call these things immutable characteristics. I care very deeply about culture. I have spent the majority of my life investigating culture, not only studying, reading, and watching videos, but by living in many drastically different cultures and trying my best to understand them. Let's call it a life goal. With all of that out of the way, it seems to me that Joe is saying, your biological sex is that of a woman. You say that your sexual personality is not that of a woman. You want people to refer to you based on your sexual personality, and a person may have white skin and thus be considered to be of the white race. This person may say their personality is that of a black person. This person wants people to refer to them based on that personality. We can further simplify these into a single argument, as they are the same. One can objectively belong to one group. One can subjectively feel that they better fit into another group. Others, therefore, should refer to them by their subjective feelings rather than their objective qualities, 
if they're asked. If this indeed is Joe's point, then he is absolutely correct. If we're going to use the above argument for biological sex, we can use the same argument for race, age, species, home address, really anything. Unless, and until, you show why it doesn't fit those other areas. This is not a slippery slope. It is reusing an invalid argument, also known as reductio ad absurdum. Showing an argument is flawed by taking it to the extreme, or also the inverse, where we take the opposite of an argument to show it is flawed by taking it to the extreme, thereby giving credence to the original. Like 100%, I would never, ever be somebody who wanted to restrict or take away the rights of somebody who identified as transracial or anything else. I think that that absolutely is 100% where I'm at. Fuzzy fuzzy. First, I'm not sure that we actually have any rights at all. Damn, I miss George Carlin. If we do have rights, where do they come from? Eric and V would never say they come from God, so I believe we're left with government? Well, rights aren't rights if they can be taken away. They're privileges. As different governments have set out different rights for different citizens, what the hell are we talking about? U.S. rights? Like the ones the Japanese internment camps promoted? Perhaps freedom of speech. Like many rappers' disgusting use of a terribly hateful word every fifth sentence. Or maybe the freedom of assembly, like we've experienced over the past 1.5 years? If you really want to talk about human rights, we would have to make them ourselves, as well as enforce them ourselves. Let me start. There is no such thing as men's rights. There's no such thing as women's rights. There's no white rights, no black rights, there's no trans rights, gay rights, nor straight rights. No. There are only human rights. If you say otherwise, you would seem to be arguing from a position of racism or sexism. In order for a right to be a right, it must apply to everyone equally. There are no special privileges when it comes to rights. Either we are all granted these rights, or they are definitionally not rights. I don't think I actually said anything against it so much as I said I wasn't the person to talk about it. Skeptic generation? Why the hell not? Because you're white? Because you're not an expert? Look, V, I'm not an expert on anything. Not a damn thing. Do you know how I inch my way closer to being well-informed? I listen to what people are saying. I try to see if they have valid points. I change my mind when they do. No one is asking you to give a lecture on transracialism. You are being asked to see the similarity between your position and that of some in the transracialism movement or whatever. If you are not the person to talk about that, I really don't know who is. But, as will become ever more apparent, it seems like you're not interested in the conversation at all as soon as what seems to be your cognitive dissonance in this area starts kicking in. But did I actually say that they were not uh, worthy of respect or anything in that clip? I, am I, I misremembering? Words, but you said it makes you feel icky, kind of icky. Ah, um, the thing that makes me feel icky. Nice. Um, and I think that I actually clarified, and if I didn't, I will now. Uh, there are things that make me feel icky that are not wrong or bad or immoral in any way. First, although again, I cannot be sure of Joe's point, it seems as if you're straw manning here. Let me make this very easy for you. Everyone is deserving of respect. The question is not one of deserving of respect, it is of requiring others to refer to you in the way that you subjectively want. You want others to refer to you as they them. Some want others to refer to them as she her and go on to compete in athletic competitions or not. Some want to be referred to that way in order to enter female prisons or not. Some want to get into schools or jobs and have an easier time if thought of as a minority. Or not. Some are named Elizabeth Warren. I'm not trying to tell you why people do what they do, and I'm certainly not telling you all or even most of these people are bad. 
I'm trying to say that there are those who will, and do, take advantage of the same idea that you seem to adhere to. This is not your fault, but you may want to investigate the issue if you want these things to stop. It seemed like Joe was trying to point this out. Let me try. I objectively belong to a group. I subjectively think I belong to a different group. You must accept me into the group I subjectively think I belong to. Now, before you accuse me of a slippery slope fallacy, I am not saying we should not accept trans people as their sexual personalities dictate because that will lead to others using the same argument for race or age or whatever. Nothing like that at all. No. I'm saying something completely different. I'm saying that I do not care what your subjective understanding is at all. As horrible as that may sound, but neither do you. Look, I hate shrimp. Damn little water bugs. Cockroaches of the sea. Baby aliens that will eventually eat out from the stomach of all those who ingest them in order to take over the earth. Do you care that I hate shrimp? Can you please stop eating shrimp around me? Can we kill them all before they conquer the world? Can we refer to other seafood as non-shrimp? Can we refer to shrimp as water bugs from here on out? Sure, my friends may choose to do some of those things, but it would be preposterous for me to ask that of you or anyone else. Just because it is how I feel does not mean I get to enforce my subjective feelings on anyone else. I do, however, care about objective facts. These are the things that will help all of us, not just make you feel better. If you want people to care about your subjective feelings, you had better care about theirs. The problem is that we all have different subjective feelings, and so this exercise can easily be seen to be futile. I'm not sure the reasons you give for the icky feeling you have are correct, although I will certainly take you at your word. I would, however, ask you to consider another possibility. Is it possible that you feel icky because you disagree with a white person calling themselves black due to objectively not being black, and yet at the same time feel fine with people referring to themselves as they-them while objectively having a biological sex? This is known as cognitive dissonance and certainly can cause one to feel icky. At any rate, you know you best. Just a thought which you may not have considered. Credit where it is due, however. Good on you to notice that icky is not an argument. It is only a feeling. I would prefer you to use this same understanding in other areas, but you do you. You should be aware, however, that it seems like this is why Joe is calling you a hypocrite. Because you're being hypocritical. Is the fact that if you look at the comments in under that video, the ick comes from the realization that people who reject transracial people will use them to attack transgender people. And that was happening already in the clip itself. Um, and so for me, it the, got pretty toxic in there. It got really toxic. I, I, I can't look at it. I can't look at those comments because they make me too upset. So people are seeing the arguments for transgender people and the arguments for transracial people and disagreeing with both because they are the same? And indeed, some are agreeing with both because they are the same argument? Say it ain't so. Well, while I'm here, fallacies are fallacious because the form of the argument is not valid. I think I just said, Fallacies are fallacies because they are fallacies. An argument form that is not valid cannot be used to show truth. As far as I'm aware, and please correct me if I'm wrong, both are using the same argument as follows. I am objectively in category A. I subjectively feel I belong in category B. Therefore, I objectively belong in category B. It doesn't matter whether we are talking about race, biological sex, age, address, hair color. As you should well know, V, the A's and B's in this form do not matter. The form of the argument is invalid. 
If it causes you some sort of pain or angst to read comments that point this out, I might suggest a change of career, or at least relabeling your channel. This is not being skeptical. This is being an emotion-driven ideologue. You can do better than this. Perhaps it would be worthwhile thinking a bit on why those comments made you upset, although I'm sure I already pointed out why. Cognitive dissonance. My concern is that one group is going to be used as a weapon against another group uh, because of a similar word, in this case trans, that doesn't necessarily have a correlation beyond that. What? Let me get this straight. You are concerned that one group will be used against another group because of the use of a similar prefix? First, I would point out that you are skating dangerously close to a slippery slope fallacy here yourself. Isn't that exactly what you accused Joe of in the title of your video? We have to be careful about using the word trans because of the dangers which may come down the road. Further, and I understand that you wouldn't know this because you've spent the last four minutes talking without letting Joe speak. Great conversation. But I don't think Joe is making an argument about the word trans, excuse me, prefix. I would guess he is making an argument that the reasoning behind the two groups is the same. I would further point out that it seems to me, and perhaps I'm very wrong here, that you're not letting him speak and indeed strawmanning him due to the potential cognitive dissonance I keep pointing to. However, I neither know your motivations nor Joe's, so take this as an opinion. The, the assumption that race and gender are the same thing is the, is the crux of this here. No, that is not the crux of this. That is what you seem to want to point to. But if you let Joe speak, you may find out you're mistaken. But while we're here, let me give you a lesson in philosophy. All X's are Y's. This is an X. Therefore, this is a Y. This is a logically valid argument. This means that the form of it is valid. In other words, it is not fallacious. Let's put in some X's and Y's. All apples are fruit. This is an apple. Therefore, this is a fruit. Let's try again. All people are mortal. This is a person. Therefore, this person is mortal. These arguments are both valid, because the form is valid, and sound, because the premises are true. One more time. All dogs are elephants. This is a dog. Therefore, this is an elephant. This argument is valid, because the form is valid, but not sound, because the first premise is false. Now to the point. I am objectively in group A. I subjectively feel I am in group B. Therefore, I am objectively in group B. It doesn't matter if race and gender are the same or not. The structure here is invalid. It is a fallacious argument. To underline this problem, your, my, his, her, their subjective feeling about anything does not make anything objective. That is the problem you are avoiding. The only way I have heard to turn a subjective into an objective is to subjectively agree on a goal. I've also heard counter-arguments. At any rate, you'd have to show that leap. On one hand, you could make the case that they are both primarily social constructs. But on the other hand, you know, there are compelling things about, you know, biology and physiology and psychology and all of this that I certainly am not an expert in. For the love of mouthpieces, could you let the man speak? For someone who says they're not an expert in this, you sure have a whole lot to say. Here's an idea. Stop talking and start listening. But as you bring up another ignorant comment, let me help you out. Although I'm not an expert in this field, it is horribly obvious that I am more educated in this field than yourself. A social construct is something that exists not in objective reality, but as a result of human interaction. It exists because humans agree that it exists. Neither race nor sexual personality are social constructs. 
And at the same time, neither are pure nature. Like most things in our lives, both race and sexual personality are combinations of both nature and nurture. We use, to my great dismay, the word race when talking about the physical characteristics or shared ancestry of a group of people. Indeed, it is used to talk about visible differences, as well as personality differences, the latter being due to culture. Just so we're clear, the visible differences are mostly a result of nature. The personality differences are mostly the result of nurture. You use, to my great dismay, the word gender. Let me rather use sexual personality to talk about the combinations of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinctive sexual character. These characteristics and qualities come from our individual biology as well as our environment. Both race and sexual personality have elements of both nature and nurture. Neither of these are social constructs, although both of them are influenced by the environment. They're not merely a result of human interaction. You using fuzzy language may impress some of your listeners, but when it comes to people who are actually critical thinkers, educated, and open-minded, this is just snake oil salesman speak. Does that okay, make sense? Uh, I- Sure, I understand your point of view, but do you understand that maybe someone would have your exact view towards transgender, that maybe they aren't on board with that the same way you're not on board with transracial? Well, here's the problem with that comparison. I don't care if, you know, forgive the the commonality, Joe Schmo down the street believes that I am trans or not, or is personally icked out by it, as long as that person is not voting legislation into, into law that will make it harder for me to get medical care. Hey, welcome to the conversation, Joe. A good question. If V is not yet able to agree with some people claiming to be transracial, then shouldn't she be more forgiving to those who may not yet be able to agree with people claiming to be transgender? Actually, you do care, V. You enforce the use of your preferred pronouns. That shows at least some level of caring. If you truly didn't care, then it wouldn't matter if they called you by your preferred pronouns or not. But, spoiler alert, it matters very much to you because you won't have a conversation with someone if they call you she or her. Secondly, I must be missing something regarding medical care here. Perhaps someone can help me out in the comments. As far as I know, which could be wholly wrong, all men can receive any medical care they need. As far as I know, all women can receive any medical care they need. Understanding that some states have strange new abortion laws, I cannot think of an example aside from this where people are not getting the care they need. I'm further having trouble thinking of an example of medical care that someone who is a biological man yet identifies as a woman needed and yet couldn't get, or vice versa. If you're using the word medical care to talk about dealing with the consequences of informed personal choices, you may be using the wrong word, or at least I'm having trouble understanding. If I, for example, were to put a birch branch up my butt and have trouble finding a doctor willing to take it out, I probably shouldn't whine about medical care. However, if I am bound and determined to hoop a bit of hazelnut, perhaps I should start finding someone who can help me in my case of... uh, Weeping Willow. But you actually did make a good point in there. Beliefs inform actions and affect results in a democracy. Very much like you not wanting people to vote away medical care for trans people, someone like Joe may care about your beliefs, perhaps not wanting their daughter to be forcefully sodomized in a bathroom like that of Scott Smith's daughter from Stonebridge High School. Now, I would certainly concede that you also don't want that to happen, which is why these conversations are very important way too important for you two to brush off with straw men and non sequiturs. You know, like, let's say I, I identified as a black American or a Chinese American. Well, let's, would you refer to me? Let's, you refer me let's talk my, about that. Go for it, Eric. Yeah. You, uh, Joe, I... Would I, you refer I, to me as my whatever, whatever yeah. I wanted? Like, if I wanted I, to be a black American, right. would, you, would you give me the same respect that I give you okay, for let's, your gender pronoun? Let's can I I'd like to jump in here for just a second and maybe offer up a different viewpoint, Joe. 
Sure. I'm half Mexican. And my life viewed through the lens of being someone half Mexican has been dealing with a lot of gatekeeping my entire life. Even as a child, when I hung out with my Mexican friends, I was the white kid, right? And when I hung out with my white friends, I was the Mexican in the group. Eric, you're breaking my heart over here. You're way better than this. Joe asked a very simple question. I am a white man. If I asked you to refer to me as an Asian American, would you? What you're engaged in, which you know very well, is avoiding the question. I would posit a potential reason, if you would be willing to hear it. You're between a rock and a hard place. Perhaps also suffering from some of the same cognitive dissonance as V is. If you say yes, I would call you an Asian American. You're stuck with turning the subjective into the objective. And any other person could do the same. I'm not 5'11", I'm 6'5". On the other hand, if you say no... I would not call you an Asian American. You're stuck with not calling V by her preferred pronouns or explaining a difference that I, as of yet, simply can't see. Look, I don't envy your position, but you, sir, are well above red herring fallacies, or at least I thought you to be. I'm very sorry to hear about the people in your life putting you in groups. I personally also know that can be a terrible and I think we both know that a great many people have it much, much worse than us. But this is kind of the point. These groups we put ourselves and others in are by the very nature of them, putting some outside of each group. Inclusion means the action or state of including or of being included within a group or structure. There are indeed groups that we seem forced into, biological sex, race, hometown, native language, family, etc. It seems to me that downplaying these groups is the best way forward. I don't care what biological sex you are. I don't care what your skin color is, where your hometown is, ou votre langue maternelle, sorry, ni de mouille, your mother language. But these and many other divides are also being pushed, being driven as if important, I don't think they are important. I think they're tribal and harmful. Just as in your example, perhaps you would have had less trouble if people weren't interested into which of these boxes you fell, and rather treated you like a person, just like everyone. But this is not what is happening here in your video. You've created a third box. I had hoped we could agree that the first two are not important, and so we should create three? Four? More? This seems counterintuitive. What am I? You are exactly what you think you are and who others see you as. Just like V, just like me. The issue that I think the two of you and a great many people are missing is simply this. Got to admit, I'm a little excited for the tautologies. Whomever you think you are, that is who you think you are. Who I see you as is who I see you as. I can tell you who I see you as, but that does not change you into the person I see. And you can tell me who you think you are, but that does not change what I see. We are all, both the person we think we are and the person others see us as. We are both limitless in our options to see ourselves, however we like, but also caged by the ideas of those around us. Uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is because these are different ways that we're interacting with this concept of race. What is my race, right? It seems to be something that a community can gatekeep, and yet what are the commonalities between them that, you know, someone can say, this is my race? You make some good points about the concept of race, but you're absolutely avoiding the question. If I'm correctly channeling Joe here, let me try to simplify his question. I was born to two parents that are both white. I lived in a town with only white people. I know very few black people. I love gangster rap. I want you to call me a black person. Will you do that or not? 
Admitting again, I could be very wrong about Joe, but I do wonder how Eric and V have had any chance to find out what he's saying at all. We are nine minutes in, and Joe has complimented them, mentioned what he thought might be hypocrisy from V, and asked an as of yet unanswered question. It seems like the two of you have dodged and basically tried to teach Joe about something neither of you seem qualified to teach. However, your show. Right. Okay, Eric, can I That's, ask a question? Uh, well, oh, oh. Let's say you want to identify as black American. Should you be able to do that? Well, what am I doing there, Joe? What You're am I doing? As black American. No, no, yeah, but what's the purpose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I get it. I get it. Here, here's the thing. I, I identify as you, you don't need to bring let's let's bring it into somewhere where I'm more comfortable. Latino. You have completely and obviously missed the point. You cannot change his example to Latino simply because you are to whatever degree you want. And I couldn't give a flying flauta Latino. His example is specifically for something that you are objectively not. You could change the example to Asian if you like, but changing to Latino is not a move open to you. You obviously missed his point. Your brain is diverting, which you know is cognitive dissonance, or you're being very dishonest. Specifically, there was somebody who called in who said that their sister um, thought that she was a Native American princess. Okay. Do, do you find anything wrong with that? I think uh, you should be able, be able to identify as anything you want. And okay, Joe. So, you know, I think, uh, uh, well, hold on. Hold on, Joe. Person, no, you respect he wants for her gender. I no, you're, I you, you've lost the baby with the bathwater. And See, you've also misgendered me. Um, yeah. Joe, I'm going to cut this short, I think, because... Well, I, I have... Can we hang up on Joe and then let you finish? Yeah. Okay, we're going to do that. Finally, when Eric seems to get it, Joe gets hung up on. Although he says he is perfectly happy to call people whatever they want. Look, perhaps due to time, perhaps due to misgendering V, it's your show, guys. You get to hang up whenever you want. I do want to point out, however, that at no time, not one of you was even close to answering the question he asked, in several different ways. I would suggest the reason is quite clear. You seem to react emotionally. It was a fairly simple question. The answer to the question brings your ideas of sexual personality into question. Or, if I'm wrong, and it doesn't, why the songs and dances? Is that you are completely ignoring the fact that I said we don't necessarily even know if there's a correlation between race and gender, right? We don't even know. Can we say that because somebody is left-handed, they also have red hair? Maybe there are people who are both. One does not necess necessitate the other, right? They are two things that a person has left-handedness and red hair, sure. Perhaps Joe isn't ignoring your point, but rather waiting on an answer to his question first. I, however, am certainly not ignoring it. I think it's asinine. I also think your example is asinine. You seem to be going with correlation causation, uh, post hoc ergo propter hoc here, but who the hell cares? No one is saying that race and gender are correlated. Or not. Why would you even think that? They don't need to be correlated for both to fit into the same logic. Again, then. I am objectively in group A. I subjectively feel I am in group B. Therefore, I am objectively in group B. This is always going to be an invalid structure. It will always be a poor argument. You can literally put anything into A and B. And it will not change the simple fact that this argument is not valid in structure. I am objectively a human. I subjectively feel I am a horse. Therefore, I am a horse. I am objectively in North America. I subjectively feel I am in Rome. Therefore, I am in Rome. Oh, wait, Joe, you're ignoring my question about there maybe not being any correlation. That's the worst V voice I've ever heard. You're right. There is no important correlation between being a human and being in North America. Nor is there any correlation between being a horse and being in Rome. 
It is not the soundness of the premises that are in question. It is the validity of the form. It is invalid. Now, to be 100% fair, it is my invalid argument. Neither yours, nor possibly Joe's. The problem, as I see it, is simply that people are making this argument. I will say it one final time. I do not care what or who or how you think of yourself. You are absolutely free to have any sexual personality you like. You are absolutely free to think of yourself in any way you choose. You are absolutely free to do whomever you like, however you like, assuming consent. But you don't get to tell others how to see you. They are absolutely free to see you however they like. This is not a conversation to have with somebody who has a fourth grade biology understanding of sex and gender and race. Yikes. You were either talking about Joe or yourself. First, I would point out that you have no idea what Joe's background in these areas is. He asked questions. You never asked him a single question. It is indeed hard to attempt to determine a person's educational background when the only words you have heard from them are two questions. Hmm. Well, I've heard a lot more than two questions out of yourself. Having watched a great many videos you've been in, I would say that your level of understanding in these topics, while certainly above a fourth grade level, isn't nearly what it takes to get into a decent university in those areas either. Perhaps check out Intro to Biology, Intro to Psych, Sociology, and Philosophy. Look, we can sit here and insult each other if you like, but I'm not so sure how far that will get us. However, Joe can't yet be wrong, as he's only asked a question, which neither of you have answered. But go ahead, insult him if it makes you feel better. That's a freaking problem, because what you've done is you've appropriated a culture that's not yours, that you obviously don't know about. Really? Appropriating a culture? What about appropriating a biological sex? How about cuisine, music, art, discoveries, fashion? When you talk about groups like this, you're not being very inclusive. You are separating people based on their race and culture, and seem to be saying that what is in their culture must remain in their culture. Do you know that ketchup comes from Southeast Asia? Short skirts are from London or Paris. Aspirin comes from Germany. If some person wants to believe they're a Native American princess, that doesn't mean they are a Native American princess. It doesn't mean the Native Americans had princesses. And any Native American that gets angry, instead of recognizing that said person has some personal issues, probably has some personal issues they themselves could work on. Me? I would like to help everyone involved. Not just the wannabe princesses, nor the overly angry natives. Everyone. You know what is wonderful about people? We share. We started by sharing space. That protected us. We share duties. That gives us more time. We share ideas. That gives us more and more advantages in a pretty hostile world. Don't hoard your culture nor your ideas. And even worse, don't hoard those of another. I just find this whole thing sad, creating divides where none need exist. We shouldn't care what a person's sexual personality is any more than we should care about their biological sex. We shouldn't care what a person's race is any more than we should care about their favorite toothpaste. I would fight, literally fight, to support everybody's freedom to think of themselves in any way they want. This is called freedom of thought. I would also fight to stop anyone from enforcing their method of thinking on others. This, too, is freedom of thought. It seems like your privilege is giving you delusions of grandeur, though, Luke. No one should ever try to compel speech. Listen and engage more. Preach less. You might learn something. <laughs>